Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian here with Kaufman Home Automation. I just replaced all of the bulbs in this uh, string of lights in my backyard with our A15 bulbs. Um, so I wanted to do a video, show you how I got that um, set up, how I configured it with WLED to operate as a strip, and then give you guys some pro tips so it's easy for you guys to do yourself. Now in my case, I'm doing this with 24 bulbs on that string. So it can definitely be a little bit of a chore to manage uh, that many bulbs and devices getting them connected and set up. So if the first thing I'm gonna highly recommend that you do is set up a Wi-Fi network with the default credentials that the bulbs come with. And that's gonna be SSID initial underscore AP. And then the password is ASDF four times. Having this network set up is gonna speed things up because now you're not gonna have to connect to each bulb's hotspot individually and then enter credentials which is kind of time consuming. Each bulb, once it turns on, is just automatically gonna connect to this hotspot. Once you have the network set up, now you can start plugging in all the bulbs. And make sure that when you plug them in, you start with the bulb you want to be the first pixel in WLED, and then plug them all in in order from there. If you plug the bulbs all in in order, that's gonna make them connect to Wi-Fi in that order. And then they're also gonna get assigned IP addresses in that order. And then as you, you know, process these down the line to get them fully configured, you're going to keep everything in order as you go. And you're not going to have to go through the process of uh, figuring out which bulb is which and possibly having to put them all back in order later on. Um, you're just going to have them all organized from the get go. So once you got these all on, connect back to the router and you want to look at what the range of the IP addresses for the bulbs is. Um, so in my case, it's from dot two to dot 26. Um, so basically all perfectly in order except my stupid desktop PC that's connected at dot 10 here. But anyway, you just need to get on and find what is the range of IP addresses for your bulbs, where they start and stop, and any holes that are there. And we're going to use that in a minute when we uh, reprogram all these bulbs through the ESPM dashboard. To get these programs, start by uh, creating a YAML file that you can use as a template. Uh, basically for the first bulb and then you're going to copy and paste that uh, for each bulb. Um, you can get the YAML off uh, our GitHub, off the bulbs page on the README and name it to something that ends in 01 for the first bulb and then you're, you're going to increment that for each one and then um, add in a manual IP. I think that's going to be important to keep these all in order down the line. Uh, add a use address on, for the first bulb, so in my case 1.2. And then I think you need to add a, uh, an on boot automation to enable WLED uh, effect. That's gonna just make it a little easier so that you don't have to go into each bulb individually and turn it on. And I should mention that at some point before you reprogram all the bulbs, you do need to figure out where you want the IP addresses of the bulbs um, in their final configuration. Um, so in my case, I did 87.201 through 87.224. And um, you can just set all these substitutions in the secrets.yaml file. Um, you can also just do it directly in the YAMLs, but I think the secrets is easier. And um, also, the IP addresses do need to all be consecutive for the string of lights in order to get this to work properly in WLED. Um, so find one contiguous block and use that. Once you get your first YAML file just the way you want it, now copy and paste it uh, once for each bulb and then rename them um, like you see here, uh, starting with one and just numbered one through 24 in my case. Then you just gotta go through and edit each one. And what I found to be the easiest way to do that is open them up in reverse order, 24 through one. Um, that way I've got them all open in uh, uh, VS Code uh, in the proper order, starting with one. So I got one just the way I want it. So close one and then you can search and replace uh, zero one with zero two. And that's how it's gonna fix the substitutions here. It's gonna fix the manual IP here. And then just set the use address to the next one in the row that it should be for uh, the second bulb. And then just go through and do that for each one. Uh, pretty easy. As you close each window, the next one in order is gonna be popping up. Now it's definitely uh, important that you don't screw this up um, and it's probably gonna also gonna be easy to typo in here. So what I do to verify that you got all these right is um, if you have access to the terminal uh, with the folder that these are in, um, I would use a grep and you can grep the each field 
of each of the YAML files and just make sure that you've got them all in the proper order. So in my case, I grabbed the use address and you can see two, three, four, I skipped 10 and 11 through 26, which is exactly what they all uh, received on my router. Uh, I grabbed the friendly, uh, friendly name, you can see one through 24. Um, so it's an easy way to confirm you got everything right. Um, if you can't do that, then I would definitely recommend that you open up each YAML file one more time and just take a quick look and make sure that you got all the numbers right. Once you've got all your YAML files situated, uh, now you're ready to program all the bulbs. So open up the ESP Home dashboard. And I should have mentioned earlier that the dashboard needs to be running on a computer that's connected to the same initial AP Wi-Fi network. Um, so in my case, I'm running this on my desktop through the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, you could also just connect your uh, Home Assistant uh, instance to the Wi-Fi network temporarily. Alternatively, uh, if you can't get the dashboard running on the same network, then I think you're just gonna have to download all the bin files and manually upload through the each bulb's web interface, um, which is gonna be kind of a hassle, but I think it's doable. When you first open up the dashboard, you'll see all the bulbs discovered up top. Um, just ignore all this and go down to where you actually have your YAML files, and that's where you wanna reprogram them. Uh, basically update each one wirelessly. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier if you can do update all. If you've got a bunch of other devices in here and you don't want to reprogram every single ESP Home device that you own, um, you could just um, move out and back up the YAML files that are in there. Um, keep only the bulb YAML files that you want to reprogram and then do update all. Uh, it's going to make it a lot quicker to do 24 bulbs. Once all the bulbs get programmed properly, a couple quick things to do. First, restart the ESP Home dashboard. That's gonna get rid of all of the uh, detected uh, bulbs up at the top. And then get in each one real quick and delete the use address. Uh, you don't need that anymore now that you got them on your actual network. From there, head over to Home Assistant. You should have all of these detected under the integrations tab. Um, so just go ahead and click through, submit each one, pick an area if you want, and get these all added into Home Assistant. After that, I'd create a group. Um, so you have one switch here that turns on and off each bulb. And then I'd probably create also a card in the dashboard with that group plus every single light. Uh, it's gonna allow you to go through and test, make sure that all the bulbs are in the right order that you want real quick. Now let's head over and configure your WLED. Um, so enter the IP address of your WLED in the browser. It should take you to the screen. Um, configuration, LED preferences, and then LED outputs. And in this case, we only need one uh, output for the entire uh, string of lights. Enter in uh, DDP RGB as the type. IP address is the first uh, bulb in the string. And then length is the number of bulbs. And that's actually all of the configuration that you need within WLED. Um, with our new uh, update on the bulbs, we added chaining of DDP packets. And what that means is that uh, if a bulb receives enough data for more than one uh, pixel, it's just gonna take the first off that stack, and then it's gonna send the rest of the DDP data onto the next bulb in the, uh, in the sequence of IP addresses. I found the chaining works pretty well. Um, here I'm going to turn the lights on and off a few times and you'll see that there's um, some delay uh, from the first pixel to the last. Um, I've still been really happy with it. None of the uh, effects I'm trying to do on my back porch are going to be very fast where you're going to um, be bothered by a delay like this. One option to uh, mitigate the delay a little bit if you're bothered by it is instead of having all 24 bulbs on one uh, output on WLED, Actually, um, you can utilize more outputs and less bulbs per output. So in this case, I did eight outputs with three bulbs each. Um, and then you just have to kind of add three to each IP address here. Um, that way the WLED is gonna send out multiple outputs in parallel, and then those are all gonna get updated. Uh, they're gonna all gonna chain in parallel. Um, each chain will be three pixels, uh, and you're gonna not have that delay of 24 chain DDP packets. I did find quite a bit of improvement using eight groups of three instead of 24 all-in-one output on WLED. Um, the only issue I ran into was that sometimes it seemed like turning the bulbs on and off, uh, one or two of the groups of three would kind of lag behind. 
Um, but I think it's just an issue with kind of getting the stream going. Um, cause I found once the effects got going, I never saw any kind of glitch or anything. I, everything was super smooth. Um, really worked well as one long strip, even though they're 24 separate bulbs on 24 separate IP addresses. And that's really all I have to say about the WLED aspect. Uh, it's super easy to configure in WLED. Really the hard part is getting 24 bulbs, uh, up on the network, connected to a home assistant, etc. Um, WLED, it's simple. Uh, get all 24 hooked up in sequential IP addresses, uh, and then you can just use it as uh, you would any other strip on WLED. Use all the effects, etc. I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, so let me know if you have any other ideas, any problems, and I'll see what I can do to help.